This video is brought to you by CuriosityStream. If you sign up to CuriosityStream with the link in the description, you'll also get access to Nebula, where you can watch the next episode of the Dark Side of the Moon project right now. Time is money. You've got to spend money to make money. Money makes the world go round, and money is the root of all evil. But money can't buy you love. We have so many sayings about money because, for better or worse, it's one of the biggest driving forces behind the modern world. And that's what makes it such a good starting point for the second side of Dark Side of the Moon. No meditation on modern life would be complete without looking at the great force that drives it all. And Pink Floyd put money into their album in the most literal way possible. Money opens on a sound collage of cash registers, paper, and coins. Unlike most of the sound collages on Dark Side of the Moon, this actually wasn't put together by Alan Parsons, but instead by Roger Waters himself. And I think that today we may take for granted the ingenuity and effort that went into making that sound collage. In a digital workstation, you could throw together a similar loop in just five minutes, but Waters wasn't working digitally. To create that loop, he individually cut up seven pieces of tape and spliced them together by hand. The result was a long piece of tape, by some accounts as long as 20 feet. This length meant that in order to run the tape through the recorder, they needed to run it around a microphone stand. This kind of studio innovation was paired with musical innovation. One of the most distinct aspects of Money is its 7-4 time signature. That gives the song an energy and swagger that are a rarity on Dark Side of the Moon. And that bass riff complements the lyrics perfectly. Money. Those lyrics are sardonic and filled with irony. They're written from the perspective of someone with an exorbitant amount of wealth. The voice parrots the greed is good mentality that would come to dominate much of the Western world in the years after Dark Side of the Moon. The cynicism of these lyrics is aided by the jaunty bassline and David Gilmour's sarcastic vocal delivery. By doing this, Pink Floyd cut through the feel-good things we tell ourselves about money, and get to the core of why we're so drawn to money in the first place. Because money lets us buy things we want, and money makes us feel powerful. After a pair of verses in this style, we move to the song's middle section, which is powered by a series of solos. First, we get a wailing saxophone piece by Dick Perry that seems to complement the images of exorbitant wealth. <laughs> Then the song shifts to 4-4 time, and David Gilmour pulls out a heavy, dark solo, one of the most iconic of his career. Gilmour's solo goes through three movements, each of which has its own distinct vibe. Gilmour described the sound of the first solo as wet, soaking it in the reverb and delay that defines so much of Dark Side of the Moon's sound. <laughs> Then we transition into what Gilmore called the dry section. In contrast with the space of the first solo, the second section is small and compact. The vast reverb effects are gone as the band tries to shift into a simpler setup, one that dropped the spacey profundity so prevalent in Pink Floyd's music and changed to the sound of four men jamming out in a small room. For the solo's final movement, the effects come back in dramatic fashion. Gilmore switches from his Stratocaster into a custom Lewis guitar that lets him belt out soaring high notes. These solos show off Gilmore's guitar prowess and the vision of the band. In just two minutes, they take you through a ride of different emotions, different soundscapes, before ending on a walk down back to the original 7-4 riff. 
come out the other side of the solos, the lyrics are no longer ironic. They've become an explicit condemnation of the ills brought on by greed and the hypocrisy baked into our own thoughts on money. That hypocrisy is present not just in those that celebrate money, but also in those who condemn it, including Roger Waters himself. In a 1993 interview with The Observer, Waters addressed this. Money interested me enormously. I remember thinking, well, this is it, and I have to decide whether I'm really a socialist or not. I'm still keen on a general welfare society, but I became a capitalist. You have to accept it. I remember coveting a Bentley like crazy. The only way to get something like that was through rock or the football pools. I very much wanted all that material stuff. There's a paradox built into our society when it comes to money. Many want to free themselves from its hold, and many want to believe that money isn't essential to living a good life. But it's hard to truly stand by these things when we're raised in a society that's driven by money and we're taught to organize our very identities around the pursuit of money. From a young age, we're shown images of glamour, images of owning football teams and buying Learjets, and we're told these are the markers of success. We all dream of being rich and famous, and so we buy into the self-perpetuating narratives of capitalism. For Pink Floyd, against all odds, it worked. Money became the band's first true hit and helped to propel Dark Side of the Moon to its legendary levels of success. And that's one thing capitalism is able to do with terrifying efficiency. Art that seeks to criticize the engine of the machine is turned into fuel to feed that very engine. Money itself became commodified and gave Pink Floyd the kind of power that they were criticizing in the song. But at least to me, that doesn't devalue the points that Waters was making in the song. If anything, the lyrics of money have become more relevant than ever. In our time, there's been a whole new class of wealth, multi-billionaires hoarding more money than they could possibly spend in their lifetime. Meanwhile, dire economic situations among the working class are helping to fuel populist politics across the globe. Every day, countless heinous acts are committed in the name of making more money. Sometimes they're desperate acts by those on the fringes of society, but altogether too often, it's those who have money who continue to exploit people in the name of greed. On Dark Side of the Moon, Pink Floyd sought to explore all the pressures in modern society that could drive someone mad. And money is not just one of those pressures, it's the driving force behind so much of the modern world. Many of the pressures Pink Floyd sing about on Dark Side of the Moon are tied deeply to money. The stress of travel, the fear of lost time, and even religion is often driven by money and greed in the modern world. At the end of the song, we get more interview snippets. This time answers to the questions, when was the last time you were violent? And were you in the right? I certainly was in the right. By ending like this, Pink Floyd show how money and greed can drive us to violence. But they also set up a thematic link to the next song on the album, as we will look at the atrocities of war and the motivations of those who perpetuate it. If watching this has you craving more Dark Side of the Moon, I've got good news for you. The next episode, Looking at Us and Them, is available on Nebula right now. Or maybe this episode has you thinking on the nature of money. If that's the case, I can't recommend Tom Scott's new Nebula original, Money, highly enough. Nebula is a streaming service created by and for independent creators like myself. It's a place for us to experiment free from the constraints of YouTube. This series would not exist without Nebula, and neither would my other original, Led Zeppelin's Epics, which you can watch exclusively on Nebula. And Nebula has partnered with Curiosity Stream, the best place online to stream professionally made documentary content. That means if you use the coupon code in the description to sign up for a year of Curiosity Stream, you'll also get full access to Nebula. If you're looking for somewhere to start on Curiosity Stream, their original series, Breakthrough, has been keeping me informed about the coronavirus. Check out episodes on the race for a vaccine, treating the disease, and the psychology of a pandemic. And then head on over to Nebula to watch some of the dozens of originals by some of the best educational creators on YouTube. 
Not only will signing up for this get you access to a ton of great content, it'll also do a lot to help my channel and it'll help encourage me to do more long form projects like this. I've already got a couple albums in mind that I might want to check out for another original. So please check it out and thanks for tuning in.